I began my career in 1968, and my entire 55-year career has been around the issue of succession planning and high potential management and talent management. And it so happened that in 1968, one of my consulting clients was PepsiCo. And PepsiCo had already started annual talent reviews. They were sort of among the first to do that. So once a year, all of the line managers were required to come to New York and to present to the CEO and tell the CEO who were their best people, who were their high potentials, because the then um, head of talent really was the COO. The chairman was not interested in people talent, but the president was Andy Pearson. And he wanted to know how we were doing on building the bench. I was assigned to work with the Frito-Lay managers and to teach them what the hell is a high potential. And I'm now 81. I have one client left that I'm working with. And the job that I'm doing is I'm teaching bank managers what the hell is a high potential. Well, that means for 55 years I have been ineffective at teaching this piece of information because it still remains a problem. So during the annual review, line managers, uh, the most of whom hate the process, are asked to nominate people who are of potential for whom, with additional training and development, will grow into senior officers. In 1971, I created the so-called nine-cell matrix or the nine-box matrix, or sometimes it's called the performance potential matrix. Uh, you have a slide of it right here. So it's a nine-cell box. On the vertical is performance, performance being low, middle, high, and across the top up here, you have low, middle, high on potential. The boxes are numbered on a nine-point scale. And a nine is a superstar, one of the best performers we have with the highest potential to grow. Now, let me tell you the story of the design of the table. We ran into two problems in preparing managers for the annual talent review. Line managers cannot separate in their minds current performance and potential for the future. They were unable to do that because when we asked them who has the most potential, what they would give us, and, and it's normal, I'm not blaming them or saying that they're dumb, they would give us their best performers. Well, turns out there's not a real high correlation between your best performers and the people who are going to grow into the C-suite. There's a couple reasons for that. Uh, one of the reasons is that people with potential and aspirations move through jobs more rapidly than people who like where they are and stay where they are for 10 years at a time. Therefore, high potentials will never be the best performers in an area. They're most likely going to be in the middle box. So there are less than super performers at this point in time who will be astonishing performers later in their career. That's who we're looking for. So I had to find a way to get line managers to separate this concept of performance management with the management of talent or, profession or potential. So I separated the two dimensions, and that's why it's called the performance potential matrix, the nine box. We say, okay, performance is over here. And what I want you to do is I want you to rank order your people on performance, whether they're uh, code writers or scientists or salespeople or whatever. So whatever you consider to be performance in that job that you manage, 
rank them first to last in performance. Okay, now we're done with that. Let's put that away. Now I want you to think about potential. Now potential is different than current performance, and we would give them the characteristics of people with potential, high aspirations, curiosity, innovation, creativity, cognitive agility, lots of other characteristics that are special characteristics of people with potential. So I achieved the first goal, which is to separate in line management's mind performance and get that off their chest. And then they give a, another rank ordered estimate or evaluation of potential across the top of the line box. Now, what happened after that first year is everybody was in the top box of performance and everybody was in the top box of professional. So what happened to me there is nobody had the courage to say of anybody that they're my lowest performer, they are my least potential for future performance in the C-suite. So we, the second year we used the nine box, we added the rank order three box system. One third of your top people can go here. One third of your people have to go in the middle. One third of your people have to be on the bottom on performance. And then independent of that, one third of your people can be high potentials, gonna reach the C-suite middle potential, going to do pretty good, could retire here, do good work. Lowest potential, they are what they're going to be for a very long time. So if we need that skill set, great. If we don't, then that's a problem. Now, line managers complained, bitched, uh, were quite mad that they were forced to spread out their people. And of course, one of the problems we have in ratings in general is people rate too high because they don't have the courage to give low ratings and they don't spread out the ratings. You don't get much distribution. So after that second year where the, the chief people officer, the president of Pepsi said, this is the way we're going to do it, no further complaints. Everybody sort of buckled in and very reluctantly and with grunts and roars did it correctly, and now we began to get meaning. So not only are they our best performers, but their highest potential, and from the numbering system, they would be in box nine. Those are the people we need to invest in for the long-term future. People down in box one, my lowest, not low, but lowest performers, and lowest in the likelihood that they're gonna grow and develop over the long term, we need to do something, because I can probably go out on the street and flip a coin and get a better person than that. So people were urged over time to address the people in box one and compassionately with great humanity send them on their way because their future was not with PepsiCo. And then put together special programs for the people in box nine and box seven and box eight so that they can have a future. Now, just between us talent management professionals, and you can't tell anybody this, I don't really care about the performance ratings. They're, they're there to allow line managers to give some of their people kudos and good news. I'm only interested in the top, which is potential. So I can't have a three box on just potential because then they'll put performance back in the consideration. So truthfully, I don't care about the ranking on performance. What I care about is the ranking on potential. Now, we have studied potential from dead scratch again, and we have come up with 12 
markers and drivers of people with potential and 25 behaviors that they render over a lifelong career. So you and I have put together hundreds of one hour, two hour, half day workshops teaching line managers what the hell is a high potential. I'm telling you now, and I think other thought leaders in the field would agree, we know what a high potential is. It can be observed, it can be measured. And I can actually have line managers fill out a survey which ends up in a score on potential. We call it the RAND index. And the RAND index can distribute the people being considered on top of the nine box. It'll tell you who really belongs in the high box, who belongs in the middle box, who belongs in the low box. So along with line management subjective estimates, along with line management informed judgment, we now have a survey you can fill out that generates a score. So we've got three sources of information on the most important dimension. And that's why we designed the nine box. And I think now uh, this design was finished in 1971 and here we are in 2021. We can now fill the nine box with science.